Friends, I am so excited on how this build is going. If you've been subscribing and following along, you know that demolition was tough, 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 tough. But now I have been rewarded with something that is a lot of fun. I'm enjoying and it's pretty simple. Uh, what I've got set up here is I've got a new wall board and I've got the old one on top of it. And I've just traced out all the holes. I'll be cutting those holes in and then hanging this. But uh, what I want to show you today is how simple it was to put the board up on the wall and to insulate. I thought this was going to be much more involved, but it was extremely simple to go from a wall that looks like this to a wall that looks like this. Look how warm and stuff full of insulation that is and it's got all these boards to tack things up to. Got the wiring tucked behind and this was so simple. So last time I tried to do an insulation project, I used a tape measure. Eh, we don't need that. I used a pair of scissors. Don't really need that. All you really need to do is follow what the directions on the bag were, which was really simple. So electric screwdriver. We'll need the drill bit. Uh, we'll need the Phillips head bit. This is the cool one with the Torx head. And um, somebody asked me about this. We'll, we'll be using that. This gives it a little extra twist. And then uh, since the metal is so thick in the walls, I believe it's eighth inch aluminum. Um, I do like to draw, drill a pilot hole with this. And then I've got these self-tapping screws. These are a little too long. I bought two boxes. One was too long, one was too short. The inch and five eighths, something you always want to check is that the distance with your wood into your metal does not go through into the side of your vehicle. I have seen that done. It is disastrous. Um, but here is a self-tapping screw. It's got kind of a fat head, so I have to really drill it in there and sink it a little bit. Next thing you'll need to do is you, you don't need this for measuring, but you need a straight edge and metal is rather helpful. And all we're going to need to do to cut it is a nice sharp razor blade knife. So as you can see here, every box is a little bit of a different dimension, which makes it, you would think, challenging, but it's really not. Because you're going to cut each one, but it doesn't take much to cut them. All right, so let's take this square, for example, right here. So this piece, you know, it doesn't fit exactly. You want it to have, there's too much gap here. You want to cut it a little bigger. So all I basically do is hold it here, figure out about some extra, put my finger right about here. So hold my finger where I want it, make the length, take your metal straight edge or any straight edge and just push down on it like this. And then you just take your razor blade knife and it doesn't take much pressure, just gently pull it down like that and pull it apart. It's that easy to cut. So now I've got my height about right, so now I want to get my width. So again, just going to put my finger right about here, again, take it here. Take your knife, gently pull it down, and there we have the piece all cut. And all we do is just push it into place, and it'll stay there. So we got a little bit of extra, and it's okay that it sticks out like this. We'll get the wall board on, that'll be fine. So you can see how simple that is. Save your scraps because there'll be places you can tuck them in where you just need a little bit more. All right, so say for example, we had some scraps that weren't quite big enough. We can always use more than one piece. We put this here and this here, and we've got another scrap we could just put right here. And then we'll just add another piece right on top of that. So there's no waste. Very, 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 very simple. Anybody can do this. All right, so next let's do the wall slats. I just wanted to show you that you don't need to be exact. There could be some gaps because this is just what you're going to use to screw in your next layer of wood. So I tried to do a lot of long pieces and then just fill in the edges. You need to have a good contact point. And it helps to know where your sheet's going to end um, to put an extra board. I haven't quite done that yet, but I'm just going to kind of roll with it. <laughs> so what I have here is this is simply one by three. I got it Lowe's. It's pretty cheap. Um, an eight foot length, I think it was around $2.25. And this works really well for that. So here I've cut a long board to go all the way from wall to wall. And um, I've got two different levels here. So I'm going to attach it to this one and then put it in this beam and this beam. So I can have one long piece at the same level. So the first screw in is a little unwieldy, but no big deal. So I've just got my little pilot hole bit and I'm just going to drill a hole. Tough stuff. Okay, so I don't want to move the board. This saves a little bit of time. So I'm going to hold the board in place. 
change over to my Phillips bit, take my screw and just kind of get it in there and get it started. And then just go full speed into there. Let's get it started. Push on it. So I put it in extra deep, try to get it so that head is completely flush. And then just keep repeating. So what I have here is the original wall board and then I've got a new four by eight sheet of underlayment. I like this stuff because it's, it's like Luan. It is uh, a layered wood, but this side it's made for putting under tile and uh, vinyl. It has a water resistant coating on this side of it. So I think that'll help. This will be towards the wall. And then the other side has a really neat grain pattern. Um, haven't quite decided what I'm gonna do for the walls. I've got some ideas I'm still thinking on it. I'm gonna see how it looks like when this goes up. So what I've done is I've just laid the old one on top of it. And if you remember, this was a bin. So the wall used to stop here. So I've got extra work with, I don't know if it'll go all the way to the end or not. So I've just taken a pin and I've just outlined the old cut. So what I've done here is I marked off where this is gonna be an electrical outlet. And I took, here's a 5 8 inch. And I went ahead very, very slowly and carefully drilled through the hole. But I'm not doing it right up against the edge here like this because of how it might splinter on the edge. So just very slowly drill this and then I'm going to take my jigsaw here. And I'm gonna go in here, put the blade through there and I've got a nice wood bit on there, fine wood bit. And basically I'll just start. And I'm gonna need two hands for this but work gently to the edge and just slowly take my time and cut this out. So I want to show you how I did my cut. So I started here, worked my way, and then slowly angled, got onto this line, picked it up, reversed it, cut this whole line here. Went back to the hole, cut a line up this way, reversed it, and cut back here. So that piece is out. Now, you want to make sure how your blade cuts. This particular blade, on the upstroke, it gives a nice uh, clean cut. On the downstroke, it's jagged. So cutting from the back side is the better way to go with this blade. So the next one, I will probably start here, go here, reverse, um, then probably go here and reverse. So there might be a better way, probably with a router, or something like this, but this, this is my limited tools and this works, just go slow, take your time because you don't want to mess up and have to start a whole nother sheet after all these cuts. And so there you have it. That's the finished piece. Didn't quite finish cutting that so you could see it. And let's see how it looks on the other side. So here's that wood grain I like. Um, I've actually done a clear coat on this for the Panorama van build and I really liked it. So I have some options on this, but here you can see the edge on the outside is nice and clean. So here's our before old board. And here is our new one. All right, so let's put it inside and see how it fits. Not bad. Pretty happy with that. Working with the template was extremely helpful. So I've got all this extra, but it doesn't go all the way to the end of the wall, but it does terminate in front of a door. So I'm gonna be able to cut that back. There's gonna be a gap at the top. There's a little concern here because these wires here are making it bulge. It used to have some kind of big um, bolster here. So I'll probably have to build something out here and that'll be helpful for running wires down the road. So let's open the bins and see what we're dealing with. So here's the outside door and you can see the overlap here. So what I'm gonna do is just take a pin and trace out the opening here. And then when I take the board out, I'll see how much more I need to go past the edge here to get behind that piece of trim. And one thing I wanna make sure you do at this point, especially since my walls are irregular, I wanna take some pictures of where I put the boards so I know when I put it back up where my boards are and where I can screw into them. And there's our finished product. That really wasn't bad. In fact, there's very few screws in that. I took a lesson from how they set up theirs and followed along. All right, so I'm trying to frame up a shot here where you see what it would look like if it was all done. So over here on this left side, there's this great little channel that it all fit in. I put back the O2 one and the timer light when you come in. So screw wise, there's just one screw here. And since I'm gonna have to build something up here, I went ahead and ran screws across the top. And I'll end up putting a trim board over here. So I ran screws down the bottom. And then I put screws here on the seam. And that's it. 
because this window surround ties everything back down. So there are no other screws in that. So if I do choose to either seal it, stain it, uh, or paint it, there'll be no screw holes. And then the old seat went up to here and that's why there isn't quite uh, enough there. So I'll put another board up here and may have to put a trim board on that seam, but that's okay because that should all be behind the sofa. So there it is, um, really not bad. Really enjoyed doing this project and now that I know what I'm doing, I'm gonna frame up and do the rest of the wall. So uh, until the next time, thanks for coming, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it.